Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good morning. I don't have any opening statement other than to say that, as you probably know already, we're going to take a couple of days now to wind down and then looking forward to getting back to Washington at the beginning of the week. Uh, yeah. President, there are reports that uh, a ship has uh, docked in Nicaragua with perhaps a Soviet MiG aircraft. Can you tell us, number one, if the ship does have a Soviet MiGs on it? And if so, what the United States intends to do about it? Well, I can't comment on any plans of what we might do. Right now, we have no inf uh, We ourselves have been alerted and have been surveilling that ship, but we cannot definitely identify that they have uh, MiGs on there or planes of any kind. But uh, we're keeping a careful watch. And then, uh, as I say, I'm not going to comment on what might follow or what our procedure would be. I may follow up without asking you to give specifics of your plans. Several of your uh, aides have said it would be a very serious matter. How would yes. you view it? Well, I think it would be. We have informed them that for them to bring something that is absolutely unnecessary to them, these high-performance uh, craft in here, indicates that they are contemplating being a threat uh, to their neighbors here in the Americas. Helen? Uh, Mr. Mondale says that you'll be eating crow on your uh, promises not to raise taxes. and. Uh, you, since you have not revealed your plans on taxes on the, uh, during the campaign, do you think you can do so now? I have told you the only thing that there is yet to be revealed is when uh, the team that has been working on a tax reform proposal presents it to us and we make a decision one way or the other on that. Uh, that would be the only thing, but there's nothing for me to reveal now except that my position is solid. We're not going to try to deal with the deficit problem by raising taxes. Will you raise taxes at all in terms of wiping out deductions? Uh, the whole, all I know is that in looking at everything, including the whole flat tax idea and everything else, if, a, if that is done and means some changes in deductions, if we should decide that, then those would have to offset um, or be offset uh, with regard to the rates so that it would not result in any individual uh, having his taxes raised by way of the tax reform. Uh, here and then you. Mr. President, have you received the CIA report on the manual? Um, when are you going to make it public? What did it say specifically? Did it recommend disciplinary action? And what are you going to do about it? I think you're going to find that the, I haven't received it yet, but uh, I'm expecting to. Uh, probably before I get back to Washington. But uh, I have to say from whatever advance information I have that there was much ado about nothing, that it is not a document that is teaching someone how to assassinate. There's nothing of that kind in it. It was actually a document trying to help uh, leaders of the Contras uh, influence and win over the people if they came into a community uh, down there and. Uh, how they were to persuade the people that uh, they were on the right side. So uh, we're waiting to see uh, what's going to be, uh, what is in there. But I have had some information on it and have been assured that there's not one word in there that refers to assassination. Uh, right? follow up, please. There, I think, have been reports that the report did recommend some disciplinary, disciplinary action. Are you pledged to follow the recommendations of the report, whatever it is? Well, I want to see the report. First, I'm not going to commit in advance to anything. Listen, with regard to the follow-ups here, though, may I point out we got a very limited time here. Now, Chris, I'd said you and then Andrea. Yes, sir. Uh, clearly, you won a uh, tremendous personal victory last night. But given the fact that the Republicans lost two seats in the Senate and that you didn't win as many seats in the House uh, as you lost in the 1982 elections, how much of a mandate can the Republicans claim for next year? Well, I feel that the people of this country made it very plain that they approved what we've been doing. And we're going con to continue what we've been doing. And if need be, we'll take our case to the people. But uh, we have the same number of senators, we, senators that we had in uh, 1981 when we uh, got this program passed. And uh, 
There's a possibility. I, I know that there are some uh, seats still to be decided in the House, but there's a possibility of as many as 17, and that's more than have happened in elections of this kind, uh, mid or, or second term elections uh, for uh, presidents in the past. So uh, I'm satisfied with the way things turned out. Are you claiming a mandate then, sir? What? Are you claiming a mandate then? Uh, I, I'm claiming that I think the people made it very plain that they approved of what we're doing and approved of the fact that things are better and the economy is expanding, and uh, that's what we're going to continue to do. Yes, Andre. Mr. President, last night you said that it's time for you to get together and talk with the Soviets. What do you think the real chances are of uh, a summit? And do you think that appointing an arms control envoy in your administration would help resolve the conflicts within the, ca the cabinet over arms control policy? We don't have a conflict within the cabinet. We're united on the idea of arms control, and uh, I don't know where all this talk came from, and we're prepared to go forward uh, with the arms control talks. And I have, a, I have to believe that the Soviet Union is, uh, is going to uh, uh, join us in, in trying to get together. A summit, a, per, uh, a summit between you and your, count, your Soviet counterpart, and well, will you we've, appoint an envoy? We've, uh, well, the idea of an envoy is, is just some of the things that we've discussed with them. It's whether they would like to establish some separate informal channel uh, so that we could keep in touch, and then they would be able on both sides to recommend whether there was something that we should get together on and negotiate. We haven't decided on that, whether to do it or whether they would be willing to do it, but we've discussed that subject with them, and so it's under consideration. The summit, what? The summit. Well, the summit, as I say, uh, yes, I, I proposed virtually that with the idea of a kind of umbrella negotiations uh, when I spoke to the United Nations. Yeah. Mr. President, if the defense budget can't be cut and Social Security can't be cut, as you've said, where do you make the spending cuts in the budget uh, for the coming year? Well, as I say, we're looking at 2,478 recommendations uh, submitted by the Grace Commission. Uh, more than 2,000 of our leading citizens were together in making these recommendations. We have already implemented some 17 percent of them, but we're, and we know that we probably uh, won't be able to do all of them, but we're studying them. These are things that are, have to do with not uh, going along with the idea that the only way you can cut spending is to eliminate or reduce some program. What we're talking about is being able to do things government is supposed to do, but doing it more efficiently and economically. And there's evidence of that. We've made a number of steps that have revealed that uh, the government is still larded with a lot of fat and still doing things in an old-fashioned way that business gave up a long time ago. So we're going to go do things of that kind. With regard to Social Security, Nothing but political demagoguery has ever been behind the bringing up of Social Security in the 82 election or in this election. Because Social Security now is on a sound fiscal basis as a result of a bipartisan commission that I've been asking for since 1981 and we finally got in 1983. Besides, Social Security has nothing to do with the deficit. Social Security is fully funded by a payroll tax dedicated to Social Security. So it is not part of the deficit. If there was any change in the expenditures of Social Security, that would just mean the money would go back into the trust fund or the uh, payroll tax would be reduced accordingly. What yeah. about Medicare? What? All right. Let me just say about Medicare. We have a problem not as serious or not as imminent as the problem was uh, with Social Security when we came here, that it was facing immediate bankruptcy. Social or Medicare looking at the demographics and projecting ahead, we say several years from now could find itself in a problem of outgo exceeding the, uh, the uh, trust fund and the income in that fund. So we need to look at that as to how we can set it on the same kind of basis that will ensure into the future that the people are going to get the care they need. We have already uh, done some things that not in restricting the patient, but in uh, putting some curbs on the expenditures uh, out there, capping out at the other end uh, uh, from the, uh, uh, the people who provide the services. 
And these are the type of things that we're looking at. Now, Bill. Mr. President, do you have anything to say this morning to the people who apparently feel they didn't participate in the Reagan revolution and who didn't vote for you yesterday, specifically the blacks, the poor, single mothers, those people whom studies show to be, in fact, somewhat worse off than they were? Truth is, Bill, they aren't worse off than they were. And that, again, has been some political demagoguery. We're going to make every effort to bring the truth and the facts uh, to those people. But at the same time, uh, what we've called the safety net is still a top priority with us, and we're going to maintain that safety net. Now, I heard as of this morning, uh, one person on the air in one of the programs talking about the fact that there are more people uh, living below the poverty line or at the poverty line uh, than there were uh, when we came here. Absolutely true. But what they didn't add is that we have cut the rate of increase in poverty uh, to just about half what it was under the previous administration. So we have made gains. We have not been able to reverse that, that trend, and we hope that we can. But that doesn't have anything to do with our programs. That has had to do with the outside income of those people, their own earnings and income. Not, it is not the fault of any government program. Uh, if, it, if it were, we wouldn't have cut the rate of increase in poverty uh, as I say, almost in half, down from 9.1, I think it is, to 5 percent. Uh, this is your uh, second press conference in less than a week. And before that, there was a long time. Is this an indication that in your second term, you're going to hold regular press conferences, say, twice a week every uh, month? <laughs> <laughs> Would you commit yourself to a regular press conference schedule now that you're reelected? Look, I, I won. I don't have to subject myself to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, and as I say, I don't, think, uh, I don't think in just counting up the number of press conferences that it's been completely fair when uh, you look at the other opportunities, uh, such as this, a number of other things, and the fact that, uh, as I was able to point out to some of you the other day, uh, out there by the plane since Labor Day during the campaign, uh, I've actually spent the equivalent time with you of at least six press conferences. Well, now, sir, you, you consider that press conferences by the plane, when, when we're shouting questions at you, when they're not seen by the American public, the actual equivalent to when you have a televised news conference when everyone can tune in and get uh, the give and take unfiltered. Excuse me. Well, <laughs> I think this pretty plain. I'm not talking about a shouted question as I get into the car. I'm talking about stopping as I am here and taking your questions. Listen, I had recognized one, and then I know that our time is up and over, and I've got to go. Uh, then, during the last your successful campaign, you told the audition, the past four years, not one inch of soil has been lost to the communist aggression. There are still 40 the U.S. troops in Korea. The Korea still divided two parts. How do you help the reunification of Korea Peninsula as a friend? If I understand correctly, you're asking about how do I envision probably the uh, getting together of the two Koreas. Well, we certainly have been willing to encourage that and know that steps have been undertaken, uh, uh, some gestures by one side and there have been uh, uh, gestures by the, the South Koreans or movements that way. I know that they have discussed with North Korea having a single uh, Olympic team, for example, representing all of Korea. We're hopeful that that can come about. And uh, we have encouraged it, and we've, uh, we've discussed this with uh, other countries that have an interest there, uh, the People's Republic of China, Japan, and others. But uh, well, I, I can't do it because I'm five minutes over now what the time was that we were supposed to have. So uh, we'll, we'll have to catch him on another time. Can we go? Can we go one more? Can we go one more here? That was the, that was the one more there. <laughs> and no. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I can't do it. I just can't do it except for, we've gone over the time that was allotted. That question, I will take how Mrs. Reagan is feeling. She's, she's feeling much better. These, she had, as you know, I know there were some rumors started as to what could be wrong in that. She had a very nasty fall uh, in the early morning uh, in Sacramento. 
uh, in the in the bedroom there and uh, bumped her head quite severely and it was affecting her for quite some time but uh, she's feeling much better and uh, uh, still has a pretty tender <laughs> lump there on the side of her head but uh, that's what it was and it's all going away now. What do you have to say to Ms. Washington in the second term? <laughs> I'm going to live there. Oh. What do you have to say to the state of Minnesota? Enjoy.